Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan, and today we're exploring Tasmania's wild east coast. Check it out, that is Wineglass Bay, one of the most famous bays in Tasmania. And obviously you can see why this is simply breathtaking. Let's check it out, lots coming in this episode. Good morning everyone, here we are, we're in the stunning Freycinet National Park. And right behind me here, you can see that's where we camp, there's our tent spot for the night. And this is the beach that we're camping on. This is absolutely spectacular. This is a national park here on the east coast of Tassie that uh, it includes Wineglass Bay, one of the most famous bays in Tasmania. And the reason they're also famous, this isn't Wineglass, this is a different one. But the reason they're also famous is because they look like this. Stunning white sand, crystal clear water. It actually looks really, really tropical, which is kind of messing with my head because we're about as far south in Australia as we can get. So this is not tropical far north Queensland where there really will be palm trees and white sand and all that good stuff. So we just hiked in, we're doing a three day little loop camping just checking out what Freycinet has to offer. You can see there's mountains in the distance there. We're about to hike up and over a couple today actually to get over to uh, Wineglass Bay, the really famous one. So again, Tasmania just blowing me away with the stunning scenery. And we've got like a four day weather window, crystal blue skies, nothing but sunshine. Sunburn is really the biggest thing we have to worry about. So this is absolutely breathtaking. So here we are, this is the world famous Wineglass Bay. And there's a bit of a conjecture about why is it called Wineglass Bay. Some people say because it's shaped like a wine glass, which we'll probably be able to see when we get up above it to a lookout. And some people say it's because the water's so clear, it looks like champagne in a wine glass. But have a look how stunning this place is with those mountains in the background. Pretty incredible, Tasmania just looks like tropical paradise. It's really hard for me to believe, again, I didn't know Tasmania had this kind of thing. I always thought like barren, bleak, rocky, you know, big crashing ocean, but instead, I mean, there aren't actually any palm trees, but if there were, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Where else do you want to be right now? This was definitely worth hiking into. Hey, that's pretty nice. So that's where we were camping last night and that is the famous Wineglass Bay. And so a couple of days later, here we are, we've moved further down the East Coast and we've just signed ourselves up. We're gonna catch a ferry across to Maria Island. So this is a tiny little island off Tasmania, so an island off an island, and it's an entirely a national park, this island. There's no cars on the island, there's no roads, there's no shops, there's nothing really except wilderness. Friends were just over there. They said they saw more wombats than they could count. 
Um, they also have a Tasmanian Devil Rehabilitation Program over there. So there are a lot of Tasmanian Devils. I'm really hoping we get to see one. Um, and so we're in this little town right now. I'm assuming that is our ferry coming right now. And this is kind of where we're headed. There's some info here about the island. You can see this little island's really tiny. It's only maybe 20 or 30 kilometers long, the whole thing. And there's lots of old ruins over there. There's a whole bunch of interesting stuff. So we've left the Jeep behind. We're gonna jump on this ferry. We're gonna camp tonight as well. Brought some food. We are really excited to just sort of get away and have like a little holiday almost from the trip. So here we go. Let's jump on the ferry that's just pulling in. Let's head over to Maria Island and see what it's all about. All right guys, so we just got off the ferry and we're on Maria Island and it is really beautiful. Actually a lot different than I was expecting. Not sure what I was expecting, but I mean, I'll show you guys around all over the place and talk about everything going on. You can see how stunning it is. We've walked, uh, what is that, like 200 meters from the ferry dock. And what do we have down here on the ground? That is a very, very furry wombat munching away on the grass. Look how furry he is. So we were told we were gonna to see a lot of wombats on this island. And I'm gonna say they were right. There's obviously a lot of wombats on this island. So we're just gonna get our bearings. We're gonna set up the tent. Um, we're told there's like free gas barbecues over there. So I'll show you guys all of that. But in the meantime, we're just gonna explore Maria Island a little bit, hang out with our new fairy friend. And three minutes later, here we are, wombat number two. But you guys get the idea, there's obviously a lot of wombats. Maybe I'll just give you the count at the end, but I won't actually film all of them. All right, this is getting a little bit out of hand. We just set up the tent and we've been counting. We're up to wombat number 19 in like 45 minutes. From where I'm standing right now, I can see four wombats. So there's like this one in the foreground. There's another one, there's another one. There's another one just there. The GoPro might not be able to see. And actually over that hill, there's at least a couple more. <laughs> so if you've ever wanted to see a wombat and you haven't really, or you haven't been very close to one, come to Maria Island in Tasmania, a thousand percent guaranteed. Uh, I'll give you the final count when we leave the island. Katie guessed 37. We did prices right rules and I said not going over so I just said 10 because anything under 36 and I win. At this point though maybe I should have said like 50 or 60 because <laughs> I'm starting to think it's going to actually be that high. So we'll keep you informed. So as well as a whole bunch of wildlife, uh, Maria Island actually has a lot of history as well. And you can see there in the background, there's a whole bunch of ye old buildings. And in true Australian fashion, this island was actually a penitentiary. So yeah, this is where people were sent from Great Britain to be punished, to be kept in jail. And, uh, and I'm just reading here, there's a sign I didn't even know, but it says over 165,000 men, women and children were transported from Great Britain to Australia as punishment for their crimes between 1788 and 1868. So let's call it 80 years. And this kind of map has some penitentiaries that are all the way around the country. So that's what this island was originally built as or built for. So there is a penitentiary over there. We'll go have a look at that later. And then obviously a whole bunch of like the supporting buildings and you know, offices, mess halls and things built by the convicts. There's a dam, there's stuff like that. So interesting to get that history. And yes, ha ha, Australians are all convicts. I get the joke. Good morning everyone, we are still on Mariah Island, now I've been taught how to pronounce it properly, and uh, we saw a whole bunch of wildlife yesterday and last night, had a really good night's sleep, it's really warm here even though it's overcast, 
And this morning it's low tide, so we've come down to the beach and we're at this spot on the island called the Painted Cliffs. And you can see super, super beautiful rock formations here that have been eroded away by the ocean. And Katie's just skirting around underneath the cliff here. I'll see if I can get around with one hand. Here's what it looks like as we go further around. Oh, a little bit slippery. <laughs> so you can see this place is absolutely spectacular. And this is just like a half an hour walk from where we camped last night, where we saw all the wombats um, and all that kind of thing. So the island has tons of stuff to see and do. Uh, and it just feels like a little kind of holiday place. It's really, really fun and really kind of lightweight and relaxing. So we're just gonna have a good look around here at the Painted Cliffs. There's a ranger talk on right now about uh, the rock pools. I guess there's lots of little creatures living in all the rock pools. And so Painted Cliffs for now, and then we'll keep traveling further along the island and see what else we can find. So Mariah Island is actually pretty big and it would take a really long time to walk around the whole thing. So what's a better way to get around? On a bike. So we've just rented bikes here and the National Park Service makes this really easy. You just roll it into the price of getting on the ferry. And so this is gonna be a lot of fun today, cruising around, basically just checking out the island. We'll go to all the different sites and all the things we wanna see while we're on the bikes. And uh, I'm having to use my brain quite a bit to ride this bike actually. As you know, when the steering wheel's on the other side in a car, usually the turn signal and the windscreen wipers are flipped. And actually my Jeep here in Australia, they're on the same side as they are for an American Jeep. So the turn signal's on the left. So it's easy for me, I'm not very confused driving it, versus when I try to drive an Australian car, I always turn on the wipers instead of the turn signal. People often ask, are the pedals the other way around? Is the accelerator, the brake and the clutch swapped around? No, they're not, and I don't know if I'd be able to drive a car if they were. But when you ride a bicycle when you're in Australia, be careful, the brakes are switch around. So in North America, your right hand is your rear brake, and you can usually grab that one pretty hard and lock it up and you won't have a problem. But in Australia, your right hand is your front brake. And so <laughs> I'm having to think about it, this gravel path is actually a little bit slippery. And obviously if I buried the front brake right now on this gravel, I'd probably go over the handlebars. <laughs> so as much as riding the bike's really fun and a great way to get around, it's also requiring a little bit of brain power. But you can see this place is absolutely beautiful. We're just gonna roam around and I'll show you some of the sights as we find them. I should add too, when we rented the mountain bikes in Derby, because that was a bit more serious, we actually had them swap the brakes around for us. It was one of the options they have on their rental page. They just have a little checkbox that says, brakes like North America. So that was pretty handy to still be able to rely on my right hand to being my rear brake, which I'm used to from mountain biking in Canada. And then the next question you might have is, are motorbikes any different in Australia? And no, they're not. Motorbikes are exactly the same as they are in North America in terms of where the clutch is, where the front brake is, and where the gear shift is. None of that has been mirrored. I don't really know why mountain bikes are, but they are. Once again, here's Tasmania trying to look very tropical. You could be mistaken for thinking this is tropical paradise, but for half the year there'd be snow on some of these mountains. So not quite tropical, but looks close. So we're continuing south down the island here and you can see the track has turned decidedly sandy. And uh, on the bike, it's difficult. I can't really ride this and hold the camera because I have to ride with one hand. The sand's deep enough that my tires are getting stuck in it. But the idea is we're coming down, the island gets really narrow here. Only about 20 or 30 meters that way is a huge big beach and a bay. And same thing on that side of me. So the actual island is maybe only 50 meters wide here. Should be really beautiful. I was hoping we'd get a bit of a view of it, but maybe there's more trees than I thought. Uh, we're gonna have a look around. 
But it's funny how often I have these flashbacks. I really had this strong sense just now that this looks like so many roads that I drove in Africa. So Gabon, Cameroon, down in Mozambique. Roads like this, I think, are really common. So it's a pretty well-built road and realistically, you don't even actually need four-wheel drive to drive this. You probably want high clearance and every now and again, you are going to come to a much sandier section where I would have used four-wheel drive when I was there. But even if you didn't have it, I'm sure you'd find a way through like the locals always do. But to me, this is really what defines overlanding in my mind, driving remote and isolated roads to get to beautiful places. It isn't necessarily always in low range, always you know trying to overcome some massive obstacle. It's more about let's cover the ground to get to somewhere beautiful. And today, of course, vehicles aren't allowed here. So this is my overlanding vehicle of choice today. But you know, on a different day, I'll do this with the Jeep. So you can see it looks fairly similar to the other side. I guess the huge difference is this is the open ocean. This is the east. Uh, nothing until you get to New Zealand when you go that way. So the ocean's a bit rougher. There's a bit more wind over here. But you can see another busy day in Australia. Of course, not a single person on the beach. For another little adventure here on Mariah Island, we've just ridden our bikes out to what they call the reservoir. And so I guess this is a dam. There's a little lake here. And this was built by the convicts, I guess, back in the day. And uh, just this super beautiful little place. We're kind of happy we came out here because it's just so relaxing. And uh, there's no one else here, of course, because who knows where everyone else is. But uh, we've been on the lookout. Today, Katie is not doing well in the Wombat Challenge. We saw 28 yesterday. And then there was a whole bunch around sort of like Camp Central. And so I said, you can have another five, but you can't count them all twice. So. That puts Katie at like 33, but she needs to get to 36 to win. And we haven't seen a single wombat today. So it's actually not a sure thing that Katie's gonna win. We'll see how that plays out. The other thing I was gonna tell you about is the Tasmanian devils that they're rehabilitating here on the island. So they've been moving them from the mainland onto this island because they have this form of kind of transmissible cancer on the mainland and it's really decimating their population. And so yeah, Tasmanian devils, they are this like little black and white, kind of the size of a house cat, small carnivorous animal. And so they eat literally everything. They have really strong jaws. They eat every type of live animal there is. So they'll eat the fur, they'll eat the bones. The ranger was even telling us that they found scat that had the spikes out of an echidna. So the Tassie devil had chosen to even eat the echidna's spikes. Literally, they eat everything. And one of the cool things about them is you might remember the cartoon character, Taz. He always does that little whirlwind thing and he shows up somewhere and he's kind of really odd and then like moves on and goes somewhere else. Apparently that's how the little animal really is. They don't ever really walk in straight lines. They never really walk at the same speed. So you might see one leg moving really fast, but then the other one's moving really slow. So they do this kind of like lopsided. They're always like darting around, but like unpredictably. And so it makes sense exactly like the cartoon character Taz and they're also like pretty aggressive and they have really sharp teeth. So just like Taz the cartoon character, they kind of show up like a whirlwind, they cause a whole bunch of trouble and growl and whatever, and then zoom off again to somewhere else to cause trouble. So I always find it funny when those cartoon characters are based so accurately on the real animal. And uh, we think maybe we heard one last night while we were in the tent, but they're pretty elusive, they're pretty tough to see. So we just have to keep our eyes out if we hopefully see more while we're in Tasmania. But this has been an amazing little side trip over to Mariah Island. We're actually catching the ferry this afternoon back to mainland Tasmania. And we'll just keep moving south on the east coast here, see what adventures we can find next. So here I am, I'm almost at the southern tip of Tasmania, which is the southern tip of Australia. And you guys know I'm a little bit addicted to hot springs. I've visited a lot of them around the world. Usually I prefer the wilderness variety, 
but right here behind me you can see this is actually they call it a thermal spring so the temperature here is about 28 or 29 degrees celsius this is naturally hot water and they've just pumped it into i mean what is essentially a swimming pool so i would prefer if it was just natural rocks i would prefer if it was on the side of the mountain but this is actually the first natural hot spring that i've ever been to in australia and there's a handful around that I will get to that are really remote and hard to get to. Uh, but for now, as my first attempt, I think this is gonna be pretty nice. It was pretty rainy and cold the last couple of days. So time to jump in a natural hot spring. Can't get much better than that. So here we are, we've driven and now hiked down to the southernmost point of Tasmania that you can actually get to. Uh, I think technically in the distance there, that is the southernmost point of Earth, but you can't get there. There's no path, there's no road, nothing like that. And you can see the Tasmanian weather has turned it on for us. It feels a little bit appropriate. It feels like we're at the edge of the Earth, which I guess kind of we are. <laughs> South from here, Antarctica, nothing else. So the ocean's pretty wild and woolly. The waves look interesting, but you couldn't pay me to paddle out there in that. So here we are, the southernmost point of Tasmania. It is not possible to get any further south on the Australian continent, I guess, even though Tasmania is an island off the mainland. And so we're just hiking today. We're gonna hang out, see what other trouble we can find, head back, warm up, maybe a hot drink is in order. Definitely getting cold. <laughs> 